Si gibai grat? Ja? Gibai si grat. It is seven in the morning. That's mine. You don't need it. You don't sleep at all. Um, seven in the morning. Been awake since two thirty. Lovely days. Um, yeah, and I'm on my second cup of coffee. So yeah, I decided to talk about something real personal today. Because I'm a firm believer I'm not the only one um, who's currently in this situation or similar or probably there are some people who have it even worse than we do but yeah I think it's important that we talk about it so maybe there's a mom who thinks she's on her own like I did for a long long time and need to tell her she's not alone and we all struggle sometimes or if you're like me most of the time <laughs> yeah so we're gonna talk about mental health especially mental health in a current world situation that we have which is not really helping at all So yeah, what's our situation? Um, I'll leave my slippers, please. Yeah, I'm going to blow. Let's see. Let's see. This is what you say, you're going to say, right? You Pouštrčko okrog, zdaj si velik fant in lepo sediš, tada če se boš vrgal nazaj, se boš udaril, ok? Yeah, so yesterday me and Andre kind of redid his nursery, Lucas's nursery. Um, so we can play up here, because we were used to go out like at least for an hour, maybe even three hours a day, walk over 10 kilometers a day. And now, with the current situation with coronavirus, um, kind of stuck inside. UK is in lockdown. Um, we are allowed to go out for an exercise, um, but kind of choose not to go out with little one because. <sighs> I don't know, I find it really, really scary and my anxiety is like way up higher now and trying to protect him. On the other hand, I need to protect myself because I don't know who's, who else is gonna like take care of him if I get sick. And Andrew is away five days a week, um, working as a key worker. So he is not really allowed or entitled to anything if he decides to self-isolate. And even if there wasn't like a money problem, because he's like working in a food supply chain, with him like self-isolating or other truckers self-isolating, the shops will be empty. Yeah, you're proud that you're daddy, aren't you? You are. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're in like really shitty situation at the minute. I do kind of envy people who are like home with their families, like all family all together and they can spend some time together because yeah. we didn't have that um, even prior to the virus um, he was away because I'm on maternity and maternity pay in UK is shit situation pay wise um, and now I'm running out so he has to work because he needs to provide for everything 
Um, so yeah. It's hard. I think he's really close to crawling, but not quite there yet. He moves one leg and then the other one won't follow. Yep. You need to move forward to say hi to the fox. Yep, go on. Just help yourself. Still the same day, but afternoon, so we had some lunch, Lucas had a nap, uh, we went for a short walk. And we were playing in the garden, so yeah, now we're inside again. So yeah, I said that we need to start at the beginning. So roughly, probably 10 years ago, something like that, I started noticing that I am suffering from anxiety, panic attacks, depression from time to time. Um, it was usually connected to like being overwhelmed, stressed. Yeah. Beep beep. <laughs> um, but then, funny enough, in pregnancy, I was fine. Nine blissful months of no panic attacks. I don't think there was even one. Nothing. Everything was shiny and nice. What you doing? Mm -hmm. Everything was nice and. Um, I had no worries, so I said, right, that's gonna be an easy sailing. When Lucas was born, um, I was expecting, like, this unconditional love rushing in, um, tears of joy, all the things that people say happen, and the things that happen in the movies, because that's normal, isn't it? You give birth, um, they put baby in your hands, and you started crying happy tears, and... You forget about all the pain and everything. Well, it might happen for certain people, it didn't for me. Oi! Okay? Okay. It didn't happen for me. Um, it's hard to admit, but I didn't feel anything. <laughs> Probably like... A month or two after, I finally started realizing that's probably because I had a C-section and I didn't really have an experience of giving birth, so I didn't really know that I gave birth. Basically, one moment I was in a lot of pain, the next moment I wasn't, and then he was here. I didn't even feel or know when that happened. I just heard him cry. And that was it. And... I was like, okay, I don't know, are you, are you mine? I don't know, I didn't feel anything. It just took me whew, seven weeks, seven, eight weeks, so roughly two months to kind of get out of my head and, you okay? Get out of my head and start figuring out what was going on, why that happened, and feel in love. Because the first two weeks Andrew was taking care of him because I couldn't because of the c-section. So he was changing all the nappies, um, Lucas was sleeping in his arms. Um, I was basically just feeding him and that was it. I couldn't really hold him properly because I was so much pain. Um, and then he went back to work and everything start, started like collapsing around me because 
He was crying all the time, partially probably because he was used to Andre, um, partially because I didn't know what to do and partially because he had reflux. Mind your head. He had reflux, which we then figure out at around two months. Um, so yeah, it was horrible. Um, then at two months, when he was eight weeks, just two days after he got the vaccine, um, I packed our bags and we left. Um, we went back home to Slovenia to stay with my parents, which I'm really grateful for, and they helped me a lot, um, cooked meals for me. Just a second. Yes? I'll be back. You're a big man! She's so light and very pretty. Pizza. Nom 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 nom. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, like I said, um, when he was two months old I packed my bags, went home to stay with my parents and I think I stayed for three weeks. So I had a lot, a lot of help. Um, basically, I was just feeding Lucas when my mom and sister were home, they were changing him. I could get some sleep if I wanted to. I had a warm meal every day. I didn't need to clean. Um, so yeah, and we kind of put like started a little routine with Lucas, which is best time. So he loves his butt, so that's it. And yeah, I went, came back to the UK for a month and a half. Then at, in November, end of November, uh, me, Lucas and Andre, we all flew to Slovenia. Andre spent a week with us um, and then he went back to UK working. And me and Lucas stayed until 24th of December, so Christmas Eve. Flew back to UK. My mom was with us. And then in January we flew back again, so we weren't alone for quite a long time. And then, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying to say that next week we were supposed to fly to Slovenia, yeah? To be with our parents again. With my our with my parents again. Um, but yeah, due to current situation, that's what's happening, and we really don't know when it's gonna happen because that was supposed to be a proper holiday. Lucas and I were supposed to stay in Slovenia for three weeks on our own, and then Angel was supposed to join us, and we were supposed to go to the seaside to my parents for a couple of days and then have a road trip from Slovenia to UK, stopping in Strasbourg and having a proper holiday there. But yeah, a lot has changed in the past three weeks. So we cancelled everything, cancelled all our plans um, and we don't know for the foreseeable future. When we're gonna take that holiday? Hopefully, the end of August, end of summer, and maybe in fall, maybe in December. We don't know, and that's the worst thing that uncertainty. Because you don't know what's gonna happen, and you just basically live from day to day at this point. <laughs> Party. So mommy it's in it's a party. That's yuck. To fui. Moye.
Moje. So yeah, um, staying in Slovenia with my parents really, really helped with anxiety because they, my mom and grandma and my sister and also my dad, they all, sorry, they really helped me with Lucas and basically showed me, teach me how to take care of him. Um, I didn't know it. I'm a first time mom and it was really hard to admit that I needed some help. But I'm glad that I did. Yeah. I'm glad that I did. Because at the end, um, I'm better, Lucas is much more happier. And I know how to cope in this situation now, but it's not ideal and I still struggle. Usually on the first day when Andrew is gone and if Lucas is crying a lot or sleep even less than he does, because he's a horrible sleeper. So yeah, all those things contribute to me not being okay. Um, so if any of you moms are watching this and now you know you're not the only one please do comment down there or I don't know find me on Instagram it's the same like name tag in life pop through a message and I would love to talk to you because before I spoke with other moms, I thought I'm the weird one. I really thought that something's wrong with me um, because I didn't feel love in the in the first instant when I saw him. And sometimes I might even blame, might have even blamed him for the situation I'm in, how I feel. But yeah. I think it's important to talk about it and like let it all out and to have support from your family, your friends, other moms. Yeah, hormones are raging and who else will understand you than a fellow mom? So yeah, that'll be it for today's, this week's, I don't know, this video let's say. What you doing? I think he needs my help. So, as per usual. Yeah. So, talk to you next time with next topic I will feel I want to talk about at that point. Bye bye.